A Penny for Your Thoughts is a nice light episode that made use of a more comedic tone. Sometimes with these scripts, an intentionally funny mood would be a detriment. It'd come off too forced or awkward. But because of George Clayton Johnson's script, James Sheldon's direction, and the effortlessly likable presence of Dick York, this story works as a comedy with an undercurrent of earnest sentimentality. One morning on his commute to the bank, Hector B. Poole pays for his newspaper with a quarter that lands on edge. Immediately after, he begins hearing people's thoughts. While attending to his job, he's able to listen in to his coworkers and customers' innermost musings. For example, this enables him to discover his coworker Helen's crush on him and that his boss, E.M. Bagby, is cheating on his wife and has a getaway weekend planned with his mistress. Soon enough, Poole informs Bagby of a plot by a customer to borrow $200,000 from the bank to bet on horses under the guise of a business loan. Also, the bank's oldest employee, L.J. Smithers, ponders on how he's going to walk out with a briefcase full of the bank's money after work and escape to Bermuda that evening. Poole continues to inform his superior of these schemes, but it's hard to convince anybody of his premonitions without them thinking he's gone off the deep end. George Clayton Johnson had sold a couple short stories to The Twilight Zone the previous season, which were made into the episodes The Four of Us Are Dying and Execution. But with a penny for your thoughts, Johnson was adamant that he be allowed to write the teleplay. It took some convincing, but producer Buck Houghton eventually relented, and most of the staff were pleased with the results. Johnson wasn't as prolific on the series as the other writers that helped Serling, like Charles Beaumont or Richard Matheson, but he's probably right under them on the amount of episodes he was able to write. He penned four more after this one. A touching story Johnson told in the commentary track, as well as a 1978 interview available on the Blu-ray set, had him recalling how he was allowed on set while they were shooting this installment. He really looked up to Rod Serling, who showed him off and talked him up to a few guests that were around that day. Complimentary words that went a long way for Johnson, and gave him more confidence moving forward. It's always great to hear those kinds of stories about Rod. By all accounts, he seemed like such a swell guy. Johnson also remembered how Dan Tobin, the actor who played E.M. Bagby, suggested to him that this concept could be made into a series. Each week, a new person would come into possession of the on-edge coin and gain the ability to read minds. The writer even came up with a pilot script that followed a man who made a fortune gambling with this power. The series never materialized, but A Penny for Your Thoughts cemented Johnson's style, and we'd see him do much more in the years to come. This was the second episode to air, directed by James Sheldon. He'd proceed to direct four more installments, with a few well-known ones to his name. Sheldon's approach to the comedy here worked well, but the main aspect to it that landed best was the star, Dick York. York had appeared in one episode the previous season, but his natural comedic ability and innate charm was on full display in this story. Of course, we know he'd go on to become more famous for his role in the sitcom Bewitched, but his two Twilight Zone appearances are memorable. They show off his range, and what a star in the making he really was. With its more airy nature, A Penny for Your Thoughts doesn't bring up too many deep emotions or, no pun intended, thought-provoking themes but it accomplished what it set out to do and is executed well. The true moral of the story presents itself near the end. After convincing Bagby of Mr. Smithers' thoughts of theft, they stop the old man before leaving, only to discover that he hadn't taken a dime. Poole is fired for the gaff and apologizes to Smithers, who asks Hector how he knew of his thoughts. Smithers explains that he often daydreams of taking the money and skipping town, but never actually plans on doing it. Beautiful exotic places where there are no books to keep. Where I'm not a little man with no future and no past. But I'll never go through with it. You know what? I'm old and set in my ways. I guess I'm a coward. It's a surprisingly poignant monologue by actor Cyril Delevante that gives this story more heart. I enjoyed that quite a bit. After hearing this, Hector is spurred on by Helen to stand up for himself to Mr. Bagby, who just offered Poole his job back after hearing the customer that came in earlier was arrested for gambling with company money. A more confident Hector requests a promotion, but after Bagby refuses, Poole blackmails him with the knowledge of his vacation of infidelity that weekend. The manager submits to Poole's demands, the last of which guarantees a trip to Bermuda for Mr. Smithers. Hector leaves with Helen as they pass the same newsstand from earlier. He tosses another quarter into the box that knocks over the one that landed on edge that morning. Suddenly, Poole's gift is gone. He can no longer hear others' thoughts. Relieved and delighted, he walks off with Helen 
as the episode ends. This is a fine story with a very likable lead. The only semi-major problem I have with it is how Hector blackmails his boss at the end. Johnson mentioned in the commentary track that he also worried he'd lose the audience with that turn. There were ways around this issue where Poole didn't have to come off as slightly complicit in Bagby's affair. Simply standing up to him and demanding what he earned would have sufficed. Or maybe he'd take the more altruistic route of telling his boss to stop his extramarital affairs. Although I will say the addition of a gifted vacation for Mr. Smithers was a sweet notion that brought me back on board a bit. Just a flaw in my opinion in an otherwise pleasant and heartfelt installment. If you want to see all of George Clayton Johnson's episodes or are a fan of Dick York, I'd say give this one a view, but it's not required watching in the grand scheme of the series. If you're looking for the best of the best, a penny for your thoughts is worth more than one red cent, but it's not what I would call essential. Either way, the next time you think you're reading someone's inner thoughts based on their expression alone, remember that sometimes we all think about actions we'd never take, or take those actions without thinking at all. A moral to keep in mind, whether you're in or out of the Twilight Zone.